Welcome to my channel. We're going to value Oceana Gold and look at its financial ratios. This is a gold mining company. They trade in Australian Stock Exchange, Toronto Stock Exchange, and we're going to look at the stock trading on the over-the-counter market in the United States. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $1.28 billion. And let's see how much money they're trading at. 207 a share. So it's a penny stock. Let's pull their free cash flow. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And that's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull their net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement. Now I need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. That's also on the income statement. And we'll put that into the model. We'll take a quick look at the numbers. So you can see they had negative free cash flow in two of the four years. When you have negative free cash flow, that means you're spending more cash than you're generating. So it could be they were investing in their business, but you generally want to invest in companies that have positive, healthy, free cash flows. They do have positive net income each year. Net income is an accounting number, so it can be manipulated using accounting tricks. Their revenue increases nicely from 2016, it's 17 to 18, but then it drops in 2019. So it may be a little difficult valuing this company since the numbers aren't too consistent and there's some negatives. Let's look at a capital structure so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay 14 million of interest on their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. They have $150 million of long-term debt. Long-term debt is debt due after 12 months. They pay a hefty interest rate, 9.4%, probably because they're a small company. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. We have to use the 2018 number, 155 million of income before tax and 34 million of income taxes. So the effective tax rate is 22% and the cost of debt is 7.3%. Now let's pull their beta so we can calculate the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And their beta isn't too bad, 1.53. So the stock moves about one and a half times the market. The higher the beta, the higher the cost of equity. We're going to calculate their ratios later. So let's get some more info from the balance sheet. Let's get their current assets. And that's $216 million. Let's see what that is. $49 million of cash, $1.9 million of net receivables. That's how much money other companies owe this company. And $145 million of inventory. We also need the current liabilities. That's $202 million. Let's see what that is. $120 million of accounts payable. That's how much money this company owes other companies. And $14.7 million of other. Let's get their equity. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet, $1.5 billion. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities. And that's $1.1 billion of common stock, $391 million of retained earnings. Retained earnings is your prior net incomes, not paid out as dividends. And $17 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. We also need the operating income from the income statement. That's $45 million. Let's look at a capital structure, 9% debt, cost of debt 7.3%, 91% equity, cost of equity 14%, and the WAC is 13.5%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's how much money it costs this company to obtain financing. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital and we get a value of the company of $1.5 billion. We divide that by 618 million shares. We come up with a calculated stock price of 239. It's trading at 207, so it's trading at a 13% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 704, so they're saying the stock is really undervalued. It was difficult to value this company because all my traditional DCF models how to calculate a price of zero or negative. So I had to use my alternative model, which looks at the free cash flow growth for the past three years and then extrapolates that out 30 years. 
and I came up with a value of 239 using that model. It, let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. It looks like it peaked around $4 a few years ago and it came down to maybe around a dollar a couple months ago. So it could be a good value. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have a bad PE of 88. The median PE of the market is 15. Price to sales is good at 1.9. The median is 1.8. Price to book is really good, 0.8. The median in the market is 2.4. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 88. So investors are paying $88 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.9. So investors are paying about $2 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.8, so they have a really good price to book ratio. Current ratio 1.1, the median in the market is 1.3, interest card ratio is 3.2, which is good, and median is 4.1, and they have a bad ROE at 1%, the median is 13%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can just cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 1%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 3.2, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Barrick Gold, Kirkland Lake Gold, and Newmont Corporation. And Oceana is here at the end. And if Oceana has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they have the worst PE of the four companies. They do have the best price to sales and the best price to book. Their current ratio is worse than average. They have the lowest current ratio. ROE, they're the lowest of the four companies. And debt, they're better than average, which is good. And they're by far the smallest company at 1.3 billion market cap. All the other companies are well over $10 billion. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll definitely answer. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.